Welcome to the mega exciting five minute auto pairing. So, I'm just going to do this actually. I know it looks silly to close in the bishop, but I think it's more solid in some respects. Yeah, maybe taking is useful. Okay, I'm inviting this e5 business. I know it could be like a passive French defense. If I play like this, it's even worse. Let's just play 98. Mm. So 95 blows me away, yeah. Okay, so we're thinking about I think the C four stuff is um more interesting. To play for like A four and C four or something. <clears throat> um. C4 around here because his king's kind of more vulnerable and uh, with that F4 maybe. Some counterplay with this gambit. Um, nuisance bishop b4, bishop c5. If he wants to play suit, that's blocking his bishop. So if he moves the rook. And the bishop c5. With knight c5, there's c3. I don't want my thing trapped. What about f5 for a moment? No. The center file. I know position he's got a nice bishop. But I haven't got any bad pieces except if I trap the bishop with knight c5, I'll get the bishop trapped. Uh, g6, knight g7, knight f5. Is that a plan? Connects the rooks. He plays g4, he weakens his king further to knight h4. So maybe that's a plan of sorts. g6, knight g7, knight f5. He'll have knight d6 later, maybe. Mm. This is my worst piece anyway. I think improving the worst piece is sometimes a good idea. Well, that's probably, I don't know. It goes to f5. Oh, check and win the pawn. Why don't I play check and win the pawn? I could have won my pawn back with check, my pets. Maybe he wanted that. Is that what he's calculating or something? Oh, he's got c3 anyway. Queen's if I was c3, trapping the bishop. So check, king h1 takes. Like 
do this now, but I'm hoping out that bishop. Hmm. Okay, might be worth doing. So he's going to take with the pawn, I guess. It looks visually more uh, to the point. Oh, there's rook f2 to defend that pawn. Okay. Queen d4, f6, or queen c5. Get the queens off. I think I take with the knight. Or is bishop f six? Maybe I should take with the pawn. There's rook a1. Okay, it's not good choices. Um. Strange sack here. Knight e8. Pretend as though it might eliminate his pawn. Or knight f5 does the same. And given I haven't got knight f5 anymore. <clears throat> King f7. Try and engulf. This guy, ninety six. Right, F five for ninety four might be interesting. Is he set the exchange? That could be a pain. Ah. Right, knight f5. Try and win this dangerous pawn with knight f5. How is that ending? Is it completely lost for me? It seems actually. Okay. Oh, he's just got a fast pawn here. Are you free? He's not. <laughs> He's not getting back here. Oh, it's not Superman. Oh man, he's not getting back. Oh man. Oh, oh a bit of a grovel, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't know. What do I do? Tolerate that? What do I do? I thought it was giving me some sort of active Check. thing, but obviously he's got the bishop pair, which is quite lethal. So this exchange sack is a bit desperate, and yeah, he managed to let me get over, get over excited. Um, winning it seems here. Yeah, I thought this two to one potential is in the background of this. Sometimes, if you look at Magnus Carlsen games, he installs a an outside pass pawn, and the end game is winning. You know various places that happened multiple times even against like Vigiana and there's like and other players um so there's an undertone of a past pawn here 
So this is just yeah, <laughs> it's the two to one over there, which is it's just winning, isn't it? Okay, comments, questions, uh, appreciate it. Thanks so much.